Welcome to EPG Partshala lecture series for arch architecture students. Uh, we will be covering fire safety in high rise buildings. We had already covered fundamentals of fire safety. We will see how these are applied to high rise buildings. Now, the overview of uh, fire safety in high rise buildings. First thing we will see is that objective is to understand some of the specific points that need to be addressed in high rise buildings as per the national building code. So, all the points which we look in this section will be based on what is specified in the national building code. So, that is a very important uh, uh, document which is the reference point for us to look at all the safety features for high rise buildings. Now, high rise building as per NBC what it means is that any building 15 meters or above in height shall be considered as high rise building. So, this is the starting point. So, any building which is more than 15 meters is a high rise building as per NBC. But then there could also be existing buildings in any fire zone. Uh, the code says that existing buildings uh, need not be uh, need not comply with the requirements. Of course, unless there is a specific clause which says unless these are altered or in the opinion of the authority which means the fire authority such buildings constitute a hazard to the safety of the adjacent property or the occupants of the building itself or it is an unsafe building. So, if there is an existing building which is more than 15 meters which has been already constructed many years back, uh, if the fire authorities consider that it is a hazard or a danger to the occupants uh, adjacent to that building, then they may uh, ask the bu building to be either pulled down or implement some of the aspects related to uh, the fire safety. Now, permission for alteration required any addition or alterations of construction uh, which is exceeding 500 meters square which is 5000 square feet for all IRS buildings shall be with the approval of the local fire authority. So, it is not that once you have received you have constructed a building and then it is uh, it is as per the standards any alteration which is happening which is based on this uh, uh, size. Uh, anything area, area exceeding 500 meter square which is 5000 square feet, then it needs to have the approval of the local fire authority. This is as per the basic definition in NBC. Now, we talked about briefly on uh, classification and floor area ratios, different resident, different uh, types of building, the occupancy classification we talked about residential, educational, institutional, assembly, business, mercantile, industrial, storage and hazardous. Uh, you have a floor area ratio and we also talked about type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4. So, here you have if you see UL means unlimited. So, a residential building in a type 1 can actually there is no restriction on the floor area ratio. Whereas, if you see the other buildings will have a floor area ratio restriction based on which under which type they are coming under. So, this is an important area to start with when you are looking at uh, Im implementing high rise building. Now, there is also a mix and match we talked about today most high rises buildings are not occupied by only one type. There could be a mix and match you could have a hotel and a mall, you could have a mall and residential. In some cases you can have office complex, mercantile building and a mall. So, there is a combination of uh, uh, occupancies which are there. So, this uh, will also influence the way the FAR values are calculated. For example, if you have a residential area and it is constructed with a 4 R type uh, type 1 structure, there is no limit to the total area to be considered. So, this is something which you need to understand by looking at the tables and finding out what is the occupancy, what is the fire rating and what is the area which you can build. So, this is basically a guideline to help us determine what kind of areas can be constructed in specific for specific building classification. Now, Similarly, uh, hazardous occupancy fire or 4 hour fire load constructed 1 hour structure cannot be permitted. So, the various occupancies uh, and the FAR values have to be looked into first before going ahead with the uh, building plans. So, this is a guideline for from the NBC to help us to understand how a design of a building is to be carried out. Now, just an example if a plot area is 3000 square meters the ground coverage permitted is one third of plot area that is from the tables. So, the ground coverage works out to 1000 square meters. FAR permitted in that locality is 4 that means, the permitted total area of all the floors is 3000 into 4 that is 12000 square meters. 
since the ground coverage is only 1000, the number of floors shall be 12000 by 100. So, this is the way a practical application of FAR is done for given plot area where it is in that fire zone or locality where it is being constructed, what is the area factor for consideration and then each floor what will be the area and the number of floors that is permitted in that particular building. So, this is an example of finding out how you can design a high rise building. Now, the other aspects of NBC are very practical uh, guidelines to ensure that uh, safety in, when you talk about uh, the clearances, approach, entrance, setback space, all this is ensured to ensure that in case of an emergency, a high rise building is going to have a larger impact in the way a firefighting has to happen. A firefighting in a smaller building or a, a not a high building is not so difficult when you have the buildings which are exceeding 15 meters and then go up to several height. So, this is important from the point of view of a fire engine able to come inside. So, one of the important aspects is the width of a road. So, as per section 4.6 a uh, of the NBC, the road which abuts high rise building shall be more than 12 meters width. The road should be hard surface to carry a minimum, 18, uh, minimum weight of 18,000 kgs that is the maximum weight of a fire engine which is fully laden with water. So, these are practical this thing. So, you can have 12 meters. So, a fire engine can approach from this side although this side the uh, road may taper. You can also have at an inter intersection this is 12 meters, but at any two points if the distance uh, available is less than 12 meters then this cannot be considered because a fire engine cannot enter this from either side. So, this is an important aspect which is called the approach. Uh, the entrance and the setback space. Then the entrance width as per again section, every high rise building should have at least two means of access, one remote to each other which means that there should be uh, two points of entrance or exit to a building and this also specifies minimum width of 4.5 meters with a clearance of 5 meters. So, this is explained in the drawing. So, you need to have uh, uh, two entrances as per any high rise building. So, which means that you should plan the layout of the building accordingly. So, this is as far as the entrance width and height clearance, you are talking about height clearance of 5 meters. Now, the setback uh, space or open space again this depends on the height of the building. So, for a building up to 30 meters height, one third area of the building should be the setback space and then there should also be a 6 meter space which is available uh, within that uh, within that setback space. So, that is also another aspect which is to be conser considered while designing the high rise building. Now, this is uh, a table which gives the height of the building and also gives an exterior open space setbacks to be left on all sides. So, this is minimum space requirement. So, uh, this has to be clearly adhered to. So, there is a table which gives from 9.5 meters and so on up to 50 meters and above 50 meters you will need to have a space of 16 meters on all sides. So, this is as per as mandated by the uh, NBC code. Now, there is also something related to car parking. So, it also addresses the car parking area. If in a setback area open space is more than 12 meters, the provision for car parking can be done in the setback or open spaces at the periphery leaving a 6 meter motorable road. The 6 meter is basically for any fire engine to move. So, if this distance is more than 12 meters then the periphery can be used for car park allowing a 6 meter uh, space for the fire engine to move out. So, this is something and car parking shall also have to be done at basement. So, apart from obviously the space available at the periphery may not be uh, enough for cars to be accommodated. So, you need to have a basement car parking with provision of two ramps, minimum of two ramps, one remote to other. So, you need to have one entry and one exit or you need to have one entry exit and one again another entry exit, but there has to be remote to each other, they cannot be near each other. So, this is another uh, guideline given by the NBC for car parking. So, this is uh, something which has to be followed while designing. Now, staircases, this is uh, again a table, this is table is again available in uh, NBC. So, it is not something we need to remember, we need to know where we need to look at. So, this is the travel distance for occupancy and type of construction. So, if you have again you have uh, the various uh, group of occupancies and then you have maximum travel distance 
for type 1 and 2 and type 3 and 4. You see here at any point there should be a travel distance for an exit uh, staircase should be 30 meters. So, this is for residential it then changes to industrial and then if, if it is in a type 3 or 4 which is more little bit more stringent then the distances will reduce uh, slightly. So, which means that a person should be able to travel to a staircase minimum distance should be this from any point within that interior of the building. So, this is as far as travel distances for staircases uh, applies. Now, you also have something for exit doors and capacities. So, the unit of exit width used to measure the capacity shall be 500 mm, a clear width of 250 mm shall be counted as additional half unit, clear widths less than 250 mm shall not be counted. So, for example, this is the he is talking about the minimum 250 mm and this distance is uh, 500 mm. So, you need to have this space available for you to en ensure that you exit uh, through the facility. So, this is as far as exit doors and capacities and also the total occupants uh, there is also a specification in terms of time. The total occupants from a particular floor must evacuate within 2 and a half minutes for type 1, 1 and a half minutes for type 2 and 1 minute. So, the size of the exit doorway shall be viewed accordingly keeping in view as per the previous table. So, for example, you have the exit width is here mentioned 1500 and this setback will be about 450 or 550. If it is 550 then you need to have the exit as 1400. This is used to ensure that the people are able to evacuate. All these are design considerations to help uh, evacuation of a building so that if there is a fire, the people shall be evacuated uh, safely. That is the first consideration in all these parameters which are similarly if there is a fire, the fire tender should uh, engine should be able to come in and fire fighting people have to be able to access the uh, points for fighting. Then there is we talked about exit signage, uh, exit signage should be clearly visible and the route to reach the exit shall be clearly marked, clearly marked and there should be signs posted. So, you will normally find that if you go to a new building you should have these posted in, in regular uh, locations so that you are able to exit the facility. So, you have exit signs you have clearly illuminated because normally what happens in, in, in there is a fire, the fire um, electric power supply is cut and then you will not have visibility and there could be smoke. So, you will have these exit signs which are illuminated so that people can exit towards the exit sign. So, these shall be alternate supply shall be provided to these exit sign, they shall not be uh, from the main source so that you will have a battery uh, to ensure that these signs work even if the main power is off. So, that is an important consideration for a exit signs. And refugee areas, what it means is that if you have buildings for more than 24 meters in height, a refuge area is an intermediate point where people can connect, uh, collect, come down and then move on to a, a safer location. A refuge area of 15 meter square or an area equivalent to 0.3 meters. So, this is something which gives you the guideline to accommodate uh, two consecutive floors. So, it is not possible sometimes when you have a high rise building, everybody cannot come down through the ground floor in one shot, there will be a stampede. So, you will have some kind of a refuge area where some people can collect at an interim point and then proceed further towards. So, it ensures that um, a very streamlined way of exi exit is maintained, so that the refugees, uh, people, uh, refuge area ensures that there is no overcrowding through the staircase. So, it also deals with areas uh, heights which are more than between 24 and 39 and above 39. So, there are guidelines for the area number of refuge areas to be provided. So, this is also a factor to be considered. Sometimes it is it, this is something which is left out because every space on the building uh, costs, in a, costs money. So, sometimes it is not possible to have a refuge area in terms from the economic point of view, but from safety point of view it is very important to provide refuge area so that the evacuation when it happens can happen in a very easy way. Then uh, there is something called fire towers which are external to the building which allows people to get out which is completely fire rated doors and walls. So, which means that any smoke which is happening in the building does not come into the fire tower. So, this is uh, uh, another uh, provision in the court to ensure that uh, people are able to evacuate from the from the smoke of or the fire affected area through the fire tower. So, this is something which is also important and the doors leading to this fire door should be always uh, should be uh, should not be tied open or they should not uh, be damaged. They should be ensured that they are always shut 
the idea is that fire or smoke coming here does not enter into this building because most important point in fire uh, situation is the smoke which causes more deaths than the actual fire or the heat itself. Now, in high rise building over 8 stories or 24 meters height at least one required means of egress shall be a fire tower. So, apart from your the exit uh, emergency exit you also need to have a fire tower which, uh, which will be applicable for more than 8 stories or 24 meters in height. It has you talked we talked about 2 hour fire rating. So, this is the, uh, the doors which will have a fire rating and the internal material which will also be used to ensure that you have a 2 hour fire rating. So, this is the guideline for high rise buildings with respect to the refuge areas and the fire tower. Now, lifts any building which is more than 15 shall be provided with uh, capacity of 8 passengers and fully aut fully automated obviously. You also need to have a separate uh, you know uh, fire lift. So, that one fire lift per uh, 2000 square meters of floor area shall be provided and available for exclusive use of firemen. So, normally what happens is that the lifts in, in a fire alarm situation are brought down they are grounded to the ground floor. So, that people do not use because the passage above the lift can cause uh, smoke to travel. So, people are not allowed to use the lifts, but there will be a fire lift which will be operated which can take the fire fighting team to the respective floor for fighting the fire. Now, these are all the various aspects uh, related to uh, how uh, people can be evacuated from a building. Then you have the second part which is the fire fighting which actually uh, will be used to do the fire fighting or putting out the fire which is a combination of several aspects. If you see here you have a table NB, uh, 23 of NBC which gives minimum fire fighting installation. So, this is the minimum requirements for fighting fire. You will have the classification of buildings and then you will have different uh, equipment which is mentioned here. You have fire extinguisher, you have a hose reel, you have a dry riser, you have wet riser, you have down comer. So, all these parameters are important for you to understand to ensure that the building has these in place. It also gives what is the pump capacity, what is the water capacity and this will vary depending on the height of the building. So, we will see later how this is a, a summary of for different heights what are the various uh, parameters that are used. But before that you need to understand what these terms mean. So, we will have a quick look through what this means. So, the basic terminologies which are used in the table 23 are fire extinguisher, hose reel, dry riser, wet riser, down comer, yard hydrant, an automatic sprinkler system, a water supply and pumps. This is what you, you saw in the previous year uh, these terms appear in this uh, table in a horizontal and this is what is being mentioned here. We will look into each of them little bit briefly, but uh, quickly to understand how they play a role. Now, the fire extinguishers basically are based on type of fire. Uh, like we said we cannot use water for uh, putting out an electrical fire. So, you need something which needs to be used with uh, fire. So, the classification is type of fire and you have extinguishers which are meeting those fires. So, for what example water can be used on type of fire which is basically wood paper cloth, but you cannot use them for uh, oil or electric or combustible material. Similarly, foam you can use it for two types, but you cannot use it for the other. Dry powder today is available which can be used for both all kinds of fires A, B, C and D, but cannot be used for kitchen and there are some specific uh, extinguishing agents which are available to use for cooking oil in cooking in kitchens where there is oil hot oil if that catches fire you can use this kind of an extinguishing agents. So, Indian standard uh, like is like it we talked about the standard tells you uh, gives you the details of selection installation and the maintenance of first aid fire extinguisher code of practice. So, this basically supplements the national building code and gives you how many uh, fire fighting uh, fire extinguishers have to be placed what kind of fire extinguisher and what height it should be maintained and so on, what is the periodicity of maintenance all that is available in this Indian standard uh, uh, edition. Now, we talked about risers and down comers basically a riser is nothing but a pipe which has outlet at each floor. Normally, this is called a dry rising main this is used in hilly areas where water can freeze. So, normally you, you will not allow water inside you have a fire engine comes in it connects here opens the pump and then you have you can connect to the each individual outlet on each floor for you to fight fire. The other thing is called a wet rising main where there is a tank, there is a pump and the 
water is always constantly available in this pipe and at each outlet you can have what you just open the valve here and the water is available for you to fight and the pump will continue to pump water for you to fight the fire. Then the third example is down comer. This is normally used for lower height buildings. It is not used for high rise. So, we will not look at it, but basically you have a tank overhead tank and then because of gravity the water will flow, but obviously when you have a high rise building the size of the tank becomes too big. So, you will normally go in for a wet rising main for high rise buildings. Now, there is something called a yard hydrant which is at the periphery of the building which allows you to fight fire from outside the building. If there is a fire uh, which is too big and cannot be fought by getting inside then you use a yard hydrant to spray water on all directions uh, to the towards the building. So, this is a photograph of a yard hydrant which is there in the perimeter and this is uh, mentioned at every 45 meters and 30 meters depending on the light ordinary or high hazard. Uh, uh, they are maintained at a distance of 1.5 to 15 meters from the external wall of the building. So, this yard hydrant is used in the periphery of the building. Now, you also have hose reel where it is there on each floor and then you have a hose reel which is cabinet which is inside a cabinet you will find it in lot of residential apartments where you can then pull this hose reel and this is connected to the wet riser or down comer and therefore, then you can open uh, the fire uh, use this to fight the fire. So, in addition to wet riser down cover first aid hose reel shall be installed in all floors. So, this is something which is mandatory uh, which is more than 15 meters in height every floor should have and the length of the hose should be enough for you to reach the furthest point. So, the number of hose reels will depend on the floor area of that particular building. Then you have these are all manual methods of fighting you have automatic sprinkler system what it basically is that it is connected to a pipe which is carrying water there is a bulb which contains a certain uh, chemical or a, a liquid or a fluid which bursts at specific temperature. So, when the heat because of the fire exceeds a certain temperature you can see the bulb exploding and the water from the pipeline then gets sprayed and then you can see the water flowing into the specific area. So, you will have uh, a sprinkler system is basically many such sprinklers will be put on a pipeline and they are connected to a source of water supply uh, from where the water is continuously available till the time the capacity is uh, water capacity is there water will continue to flow out and it will put out the fire. So, this is basically an automatic sprinkler system. This is something which is used in all buildings to basically protect in case uh, the fire detection system works and then after that you are not able to uh, if you are unable to put out the fire and the fire becomes big then this will protect your property and by the time you should have evacuated the people from inside the building. So, this is something which a table summary which gives basically what is the requirement whether I can use a dry riser, whether I need to use a wet riser, whether I need to use a down comer and then I should what is the capacity of the tank in liters, uh, what is the capacity of the terrace pump, what is the capacity of the pumps. So, this summary helps you to understand what kind of equipment should be available. Just to summarize all high rise building must have fire extinguishers, hose reel and manual fire reduction systems. A dry riser is to be used in hill station where water can freeze under guidance of local fire authority. All these systems have to be appro approved by the local fire authority for the technical uh, suitability for of that system to that uh, specific location. Wet racers are a must with exception of apartments and educational buildings as per specified heights. Automatic fire reduction is mandatory in addition to manual except as above. So, every high rise apartment should have high rise building should have an automatic fire reduction. So, then you have number of pumps these are something to deal with the number of electrical pumps local fire authorities must be consulted for any clarification. So, any building needs to have the uh, interaction with the local fire authority before the firefighting system is uh, implemented and installed and then they will the fire authorities will come and inspect and issue a no objection certificate only then the building can be taken up for occupancy. So, it is important that for any ambiguity they are consulted. Uh, and uh, any changes suggested by them implemented otherwise the building may not get the no objection certificate for occupation. Now, we talked about manual and automatic fire detection system in the previous uh, slide. So, manual is basically uh, something which uses a manual call point which are activated by human beings when they see a fire this will be connected to a fire alarm panel which will sound an alarm. So, it does not use automatic detection. So, the NBC also allows manual call points to be used in some buildings where 
the person can pull a, a particular equipment for example, he just breaks this glass and pulls this point which this is connected to a fire alarm panel which will sound an alarm. So, this is called a manual uh, system. Automatic division uses detectors which means it detect uses smoke, heat, smoke plus heat to direct fire and that is com is connected to a fire alarm panel. So, these detectors this is director, this is a, a sounder uh, which alarms and this is a fire alarm panel which then automatically finds out uh, that there is a fire and then gives an alarm for people to evacuate. So, automatic fire direction system is installed as per IS 2189 code of practice which is the Indian standard and this is uh, which will specify how many directors to use, what is the spacing between directors, what kind of directors can be used. So, that is a detailed uh, description of what kind of equipment can be used for uh, automatic detection. The firefighting in high rise buildings is basically to look at what are the provisions you need to ensure to evacuate people in case of an emergency, so that you have space enough for entry of a fire fighting, uh, uh, fire fighting equipment at uh, the uh, fire fighting engine to come into play inside, where water is available for them to use, how much amount of water is available. These are some of the uh, standards which need to be followed, so that the fire fighting equipment can come in. Secondly, it also deals with how people will be taken out, what is the number of staircases which need to be available, what is uh, a refuge area where there is a large uh, high rise building which is more than 24 meters height, how many number of refuge areas should be allowed, what will be the capacity of exits, how many lifts should be there, what will be the number of fire lifts which are available. So, all these are allowed uh, are ensured uh, to ensure to or uh, specified to ensure that people are taken out of the building safely if there is a fire. At the same time, the fire can be fought by using either manual fire extinguishers, water based or using the sprinkler systems which are designed to meet the requirements. So, uh, in high rise buildings, the important point to be considered are uh, as per the definition any building which is more than 15 meters. So, that is the first step and then to try and understand uh, the various aspects related to how people will be taken out in case of an emergency and what are the different uh, space availability to be made uh, around the building uh, and outside the building for entry of uh, fire uh, fighting equipment. And we also talked about what are the automatic and uh, manual fire detection systems which have to be put in place. So, that the purpose of the fire, fire detection system is to ensure that adequate advance warning is given to people, so that uh, they are able to evacuate. So, it is also important to install the right kind of detection systems, so that false alarms are not uh, coming into play. So, the detection system has to be as foolproof as possible, the way it is designed and installed is very important. And here the core in building code, national building code and the standards, the Bureau of Indian standards have very detailed. Uh, information of how a fire alarm system has to be installed and what kind of cables have to be used. So, it is a elaborate uh, uh, solution which is uh, which has to be put in place. So, the fire detection system gives advance warning and then based on the type of building, the number of exits people uh, come out of the building and then you have the fire fighting system in place starting with the manual fire fighting then the automatic sprinkler system. The sprinkler system is also has many variations depending on the type of building. Uh, like we talked about the bulb will uh, burst at a specific temperature, that, that temperature will depend on the kind of environment where it is put in. So, you can have bulbs which will burst at 59, uh, 65 and so on, different temperatures are available for it to burst. So, design of that is also very critical to ensure that uh, the building is protected adequately. Uh, so, these are the various aspects of national building code. So, we looked at uh, the, the kind of building, type of classification of buildings, fire rating of buildings, uh, fire rating of the in, uh, various uh, components that are used or various uh, materials that are used in construction and then the various signages, exit sign and all that. These are the uh, elements which are related to fire prevention and then we lock, talked about fire protection. So, this is in summary the building code gives more than information for each type of building to ensure that the safety systems are adhered to. Thank you very much.